We've come to the final step in our hypothesis test, drawing our conclusion. To do this, we will compare our p-value to our alpha. If our p-value is less than or equal to our alpha value, we reject the null hypothesis. If our p-value is greater than our alpha value, we fail to reject our null hypothesis. In this case, our alpha value was 0.05 and our p-value was 0.423, so we fail to reject our null hypothesis. If the null hypothesis was true, we'd expect values this extreme about 42% of the time. That's fairly common, so I don't feel confident that the differences observed between the means of the samples is significant. Notice that our hypothesis test can only reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. We can never say, for example, the null hypothesis was proven correct. This is because it can never prove the null hypothesis true unless we test the entire population. The trick here is that it's easier to show a statement to be false than prove it true. For example, consider the statement, all flamingos are pink. To prove this, we need to examine all flamingos in the world. However, if we observe just one black flamingo, we can reject the statement, all flamingos are pink. Or, to use a quote attributed to Albert Einstein, no amount of experimentation can ever prove me right. A single experiment can prove me wrong. So, while our sample wasn't able to reject the null hypothesis, it also wasn't able to prove it. The only way we could prove it is by testing the entire population.